Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi everybody, this is uh, Dr. Ravindra Maradi, Associate Professor in the Department of Biochemistry, Kasturva Medical College. In this lecture, I will be discussing about regulation of blood glucose level. So, the first before uh, discussing about that, we have to know the normal blood glucose level. So, you, you can see here the fasting blood glucose level postprandial blood glucose level and glycated hemoglobin that is HbA1c in percentage and this fasting and postprandial blood glucose levels in milligram per deciliter. Normally, the FBS should be between 60 to 100 milligram per deciliter and postprandial blood glucose should be 120 to 140 milligram per deciliter. If the fasting blood glucose is level above 100, till 125 we call it as impaired fasting blood glucose level anything more than 126 milligram per deciliter we call it as diabetes similarly in postprandial blood sugar normal i told 120 to 140 and impaired is 140 to 200 that is impaired postprandial blood sugar level anything more than 200 milligram per deciliter we call it as diabetes in uh, glycated hemoglobin level that is HbA1c is normally it is less than 5.7 and if it is between 5.7 to 6.4 percent it is impaired and if it is more than 6.5 we diagnose it as diabetes. So, these numbers are very very important and uh, we have to maintain our blood glucose level within this narrow normal uh, ranges. <coughs> Then question comes, why should we maintain that, regulate in that uh, normal uh, range? If it is not there, what happens? It leads to a condition called hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia is nothing but increased glucose level in the blood and if it crosses more than renal threshold, it starts excreting in the urine that is called glycosuria. And as you know that glucose is osmotically active molecule not only it is excreted through urine it carries water along with that so there is increased excretion of urine that is called polyuria once the lot of urine is excreted and it is taking water and thirst center will be stimulated and it causes increased in thirst and patients will take lot of water and excrete lot of water and increased thirst is called polydipsia and because this blood glucose level is enough in the blood because of the uh, reason of uh, insulin that is not utilized and body starts catabolizing the uh, tissue proteins and uh, uh, lipids. So, it uh, uh, decreases the uh, catabolizes and increases the uh, hunger and the patients will eat a lot that is polyphagia increase in the hunger and uh, if it is uncontrolled and uh, if it is uh, 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 glucose is too high in the body that time the body starts catabolizing the lipid store that is in the adipocytes and produces uh, increase in the level of triacylglycerol in the <coughs> blood causing hypertriacylglycerolemia increased triacylglycerol level in the blood and uh, in the long run patient will be having ketoacidosis also increase in the ketone body is causing ketoacidosis. If not treated, if proper treatment is not taken and chronic complications like retinopathy, neuropathy and nephropathy can be seen. This is the reason we have to maintain our blood glucose level. Normally, this is done by two hormones that is insulin and glucagon. These two hormones play a very important role in maintaining our blood glucose level. 
So, we will uh, see how these act. First, we will uh, look into the insulin. Insulin is a hypoglycemic hormone. What happens whenever we take a high carbohydrate diet, the blood glucose level increases and this glucose enters into the pancreas and it is sensed and uh, by the pancreas and it releases the stored insulin into the blood stream. And uh, this insulin causes it overall effect of insulin is to regulate the blood glucose level, decrease the blood glucose level which has increased and bring it back to normal level. Okay. And uh, this uh, can is done by uh, it acts on different metabolic uh, pathways. For example, it effect it acts on the carbohydrate metabolism. What is the effect of insulin? First thing is it helps in the uptake of glucose by increasing the glucose transporters, GLUT transporters, especially the GLUT transporters that are present in the muscle and adipose tissue. These two glucose transporters are dependent on insulin. Insulin recruits the transporters that are present in the vesicles in the cytosol into the membrane of muscle and adipose tissue and these glucose transporters take up the excess glucose present in the blood into the muscle and adipose tissue. That is the first action done by the insulin. Then what happens? The insulin, the glucose taken up by the cells in the hepatic cells in the liver, the glucose is first undergoes glycolysis and uh, forms pyruvate and uh, 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 then the pyruvate can be converted into acetyl CoA enters into Krebs cycle. In uh, so tissues without mitochondria, there will be the glucose will be converted to pyruvate and then it is converted to lactate. The, uh, if you have enough energy stored in the body, if the excess glucose is there that is not required for any activity, then glucose will store that body will store that glucose in the form of glycogen. So, for the future use in conditions of uh, fasting condition, same glycogen can be broken down and can be utilized. So, insulin helps in the storage of glucose in the form of glycogen that is glycogen synthesis. Insulin helps in the synthesis of glycogen that different glucose molecules are bound together one by side by side and then there will be branching. Glycogen is a branch tree like structure and the glucose is stored in this form. It is stored in liver and muscle. The glycogen stored in the liver is used to maintain blood glucose level during fasting condition whereas muscle glycogen is used during muscular contraction. This glycogen will not give its glucose for maintaining blood glucose level. <coughs> then by the time it also insulin inhibits glycogenolysis. Glycogenolysis means breakdown of glycogen into glucose and because already there is enough glucose in the blood in the cell. So, there is no need to break the already stored glycogen. So, this inhibition of glycogenolysis and also it inhibits gluconeogenesis. What is gluconeogenesis? It is the synthesis, genesis means synthesis of new glucose from non-carbohydrate sources that is also not required because you are in a fed condition already there is enough glucose in the body. So, these two pathways which are glucose producing pathways are inhibited whereas, the glucose utilization pathways and storage pathways are activated by the insulin. Next what is the effect on lipid metabolism? What it does? It uh, decreases the triacylglycerol degradation. It inhibits the hormone sensitive lipase enzyme. So, the triacylglycerol that is stored in the adipocytes is not broken down and it is not required during the well fed condition because the energy is given by 
glucose in the well fed condition enough energy no need to break the stored energy form that is triacylglycerol that makes sense because this is not required so uh, insulin inhibits this breakdown of triacylglycerol by inhibiting the activity of hormone sensitive lipase by the same time it increases the synthesis of triacylglycerol okay so because the glucose that is enters into the uh, liver uh, that first it is utilized for energy purpose if enough energy is available then it goes for storage in glycogen form unfortunately the glycogen storage is not adequate in the liver it can't store all the glucose in glycogen it has a limited capacity anything excess above the uh, storage capacity of liver in the form of glycogen the glucose is converted into fatty acid the glucose is converted into pyruvate then acetyl coa that goes into fatty acid synthesis and that fatty acid synthesis synthesized fatty acids combines with glycerol to form triacyl glycerol so it increases the activity of lipoprotein lipase which helps in the storage of triacyl glycerol in the adipocytes in liver insulin promotes the conversion of glucose to glycerol that's what uh, i just discussed so promotion of excess glucose into triacyl glycerol by synthesizing excess fatty acid then binding with glycerol to form triacyl glycerol and storage in the adipocytes what is the effect on protein synthesis this insulin stimulates the entry of amino acids into the cells and helps in the synthesis of the proteins the anabolic all the anabolic reactions are taking place in the presence of insulin insulin uh, during insulin the because insulin is present in the high energy state high glucose is there so glucose is the primary source of energy and whatever the proteins that are utilized during the starvation or in the fasting conditions they are all uh, replenish back during the uh, uh, high insulin condition then comes the other hormone these are all, both are counter regulatory hormones on the one hand insulin will be released when blood glucose level is high and it reduce helps in decreasing the blood glucose level in the opposite in the other hand when the blood glucose level is low when you are fasting when you are starving condition so the blood glucose if it's very low that is sensed by the pancreas and we, it releases glucagon glucagon is a hyperglycemic hormone it increases the blood glucose level and what are the effects of this glucagon how it increases we will see on on dif effect on different metabolism the first is the effect on carbohydrate metabolism it increases the glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis because glucagon is released during low blood glucose level condition the body glucose level is low so body is trying to increase the glucose level by breaking down already stored glycogen during well fed condition excess glucogen is glucose is stored as glycogen in the liver that glycogen is broken down by glucagon during the fasting condition and that provides the glucose to the blood similarly the once the glycogen stores are exhausted and then the body can also synthesize new glucose from non carbohydrate sources so that is gluconeogenetic pathway these two pathways are activated by the glucagon <clears throat> what is the effect on the lipid metabolism in uh, uh, lipid metabolism it activates lipolysis because there is low energy state glucose is produced in gluconeogenesis but that is mainly for the organs which do not have mitochondria to utilize the acetyl coa so especially the rbcs and the initial period brain 
the both are dependent on this uh, glucose, but for other tissues glucagon helps in the release of or uh, triacylglycerol breakdown of triacylglycerol and release of free fatty acid from the store that is adipocytes. It activates lipolysis or breakdown of triacylglycerol and also it helps in the synthesis of ketone bodies in prolonged starvation conditions or for prolonged fasting conditions uh, uh, this uh, the excess of this uh, free fatty acids that are released from this uh, triacylglycerol they come back to the liver in the liver they undergo beta oxidation and acetyl coa is produced and these acetyl coa they form ketone bodies and the ketone bodies are taken up by other tissues like uh, heart and uh, uh, kidneys and in, in case of prolonged con uh, starvation condition even brain will adapt to use the ketone bodies. <coughs> Effect on protein metabolism here what happens it increases the uptake of amino acids by the liver what happens during even the proteins can also be used as a uh, source of energy primary source uh, during starvation condition we do not have glucose but uh, the amount of glucose that is produced by gluconeogenetic pathway is uh, used by uh, especially I told RBCs and brain and uh, lipids are they, they form ketone bodies and then amino acids can also be used the proteolysis takes place the proteins are broken down to amino acids and amino acids are rushed back to the liver and here the amino acids undergo that uh, deamination that amino groups are removed and carbon skeletons can be used as source of energy here catabolism of proteins take place and uh, also uh, increased uh, uh, gluconeogenesis because the amino acids are the source for new glucose synthesis gluconeogenetic pathway it uses the non-carbohydrate sources non-carbohydrate sources like amino acids and also lactate and glycerol these are used for the synthesis of glucose just to summarize uh, this uh, regulation of uh, blood glucose level we discussed the normal values blood glucose fasting phosphorandial and uh, what is the glycated hemoglobin we have to remember when you call it diabetic and then we discussed two important hormones insulin and glucagon insulin basically it is released in the well fed condition when blood glucose level is high it is a hypoglycemic hormone it uh, causes it utilizes the glucose to decrease the blood glucose level if excess glucose is still there it stores it in the stores in the form of glycogen it stores in the form of uh, lipid and also it, it, it uh, helps in the uh, synthesis of proteins also whereas the glucose producing pathways are inhibited by insulin like uh, glycogenolysis gluconeogenesis and also lipolysis are inhibited whereas on the other hand glucagon is a hyperglycemic hormone it is released during the fasting condition where blood glucose level is low and it tries to bring back the blood glucose level to the normal so the pathways which produce glucose are activated here that is gluconeogenesis is activated glycogenolysis is activated and lipolysis is activated ketone body synthesis is activated even protein catabolism takes place in prolonged starvation conditions i hope this uh, lecture will help you to understand the blood glucose regulation thank you